Alan Titchmar. Wednesday's AT show today, we're joined. Good to have you with us this Wednesday afternoon. Still to come, the interviewer's interviewer, Sir David Frost, joins me. And with music from the singer who's known by just one name, Ridian. But now to the man who is the real star behind the X Factor. Simon Cowell's one of the world's highest paid television stars. And this week, he announced plans to take the X Factor to Las Vegas. Currently, he earns a staggering £27 million a year as a judge on American Idol. He's also almost as much as me. <laughs> also expressed an interest in staging a televised showdown between Gordon Brown and David Cameron. Successful TV shows, head of a music empire, and now a political player. There's no question he has the Midas touch, but is Simon Cowell hell-bent on taking over the world? Has the 50-year-old become too powerful? Here to discuss are Heat's news editor, Hannah Fernando, PR guru, Mark Borkowski, and Sue Carroll. <laughs> Mark, is this if he seems to have taken over the world already and we weren't looking? Fair comment? Yes, totally. I mean, <laughs> you talk about $75 million last year he earned, and uh, he is now the Svengali Svengali. Each generation produces one of these content, content merchants who sort of own the waves. You had the big movie moguls in the sort of the, uh, in the 40s. And um, he has got a total understanding of his audience. Um, is this a good thing? Or is there a danger of him being a, mo a monopoly? Oh, listen, he's, he's done extremely well. I mean, you know, and he, he's failed. That's the interesting thing. He's come back. Is it a good thing? I'm not so sure. I think it's creating certain laziness both these people here um are do extremely well out of the content that his television programs create they don't have to go <laughs> hunting for anything you know thousand photos uh, run every 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 week in, in 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 heat um but i think we're all just starting to create a type of celebrity that's not what i think the best indication of what the industry is really about i think simon cowell's brilliant at actually spotting the sell-by date, yeah. you know, like Simon Fuller, the Svengali behind the spy skills, they know exactly when to disengage with the talents. And I just hope that they can deal with the fact that when Simon Cowell and the audience has had enough, they can get on with their life because it is a fleeting moment. But there is certainly glut, isn't there? There's a well, Hannah, I mean, from your point of view, he's good copy. He's, he's in absolutely everything. I mean, about five papers a day with a double-page spread all about <laughs> him, even apparently having his chest waxed. I think it was a yes, set-up photo. But... No, I think he has had that wax, has actually, he? and he's had mm -hmm. his hands as well. It's quite, really quite a vain man. <laughs> well, no, well, there's always not, there's a very fine line between being vain and being, you know, just proud of your appearance, yes, you know. Yes, so, but from your point of view, from Heat Magazine's point of view, is he good copy? Do you like what he does? Absolutely. I mean, he makes great television and we wouldn't all be watching it every Saturday night if he wasn't. I mean, this year, Strictly Come Dancing is really dying on its feet and X Factor is just sailing away, audience ratings wise. Half Strictly fans here, half ratings wise. No, but that, that's, that's more the fault of the... Well, we shouldn't say it in here, but it's more the fault of the BBC, really. By that's a scheduling problem, isn't it? They should have done it. They should have, you know... So, the phenomenon that is Simon yeah. Cowell, he does not seem to be able to put a foot wrong. No, I mean, he is, he is quite smug about it, you know, I mean, that's why he's, for no reason, he's called Saint Simon of Cowell. And he is treated a little bit like, you know, the modern messiah of, of television. But actually, he is. He has resurrected the functions of ITV. They, are, they earn £170,000 a minute on X Factor. How do you put your finger on it there? It's actually people have married because he makes a lot of money. Is it just money making that's his... Well, no, it's not secret? just money. Actually, no, it's not just money making. He is... An, he is a man who wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He's worked extremely hard. He had an idea that eight million people in Britain didn't have. He made it work. We should be admiring him. There will be kids, young entrepreneurs, who are looking at Simon Cowell now, and they will be thinking, do you know what? If he can do it, I can do it. We should be applauding that man. He has taken his talent to America. He is employing people. Do we have a go at Sir Richard Branson or Lord Alan Sugar? No, we don't. Oh, I think we, we occasionally have a go people. at those. Certainly Alan Sugar gets fairly in the neck. But I do hear, Anna, whenever you hear anything from people who work with Simon Cowell, they always say he's a brilliant man to work for. He is, and he's really, really nice. And the thing is, is that, yes, he's looked after by Max Clifford, but if there's a story or I need to speak to him, I can pick up the phone 
phone and I can call his mobile and he will answer. Now this yeah. guy is extremely rich, extremely... Um, you can ring Simon Cowell. You can ring Simon Cowell and he will answer his phone and yeah. that doesn't happen very often What's his with mobile big number? names. Because just... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us would love to have a chat. I'd just like to say hello, really. And there's also been a lot of pop stars that have come out of X Factor that are still here yeah. as well and I think that's important. So far. So well, Rydian's coming next, but he does, yeah, he does seem to have, he doesn't drop them once they've, you know, instantly made it. We've got Leona Lewis, we've got Rydian, they, they keep on going. Yeah, but there's also a lot of people who they he, ha, have done quite well out of it in terms of TV ratings that have sort of sloped away and disappeared. I mean, real talent, Rydian is obviously, you know, a real talent and he's he's got a broader um, yes, sort of Simon, market base. Yes, but Simon, in fairness, has given them that platform. No, no, they no, might no, have all been sitting at home now, they you know. They wouldn't have had that in the first place. No doubt, and I, I, you know, and I thought that the Jed would move of keeping Jedwood in was pure pure genius I mean he spotted that they were great for the show they connected with the audience and he was big enough to sort of say or brave enough to, to go with that but he's also very clever on the PR side yes he's got Max you know that's you know that's a very smart move and he's got a very clever organization about it but he's very good at actually telling certain journalists you know oh, I'm, I'm interested in you you know that that leading them on a little bit actually he put him on the show but but as Hannah said he gives us access you know you many many celebrities and many many uh, producers won't even they, they they treat their talent as if they're untouchable he doesn't do that he's not precious at he's all. not precious and it's it's a, it's refreshing and that's one of the reasons he's so enormously successful well, one of the ruthless. reasons could and be that it, this is his complete life he doesn't have a family he's not married he has no children so it is all consuming for him I mean he's you know very well occupied with it so presumably that's the reason why you know you may dislike some other people but if they're trying to keep their children out of it for instance and have a private life that's oft regarded by the press as oh they're really stuck up no they're just trying to keep their private life separate from their public life which isn't always necessarily a sign that they've got something to hide but I think it. sorry no, no, no I think that his um he does have girlfriends and they come on and off the scene and if you notice all of his girlfriends he remains friends with very very clever so that they don't sell a story on him um, he's very clever about that he They're usually buys the house Hannah yeah actually, and he usually gives them a credit the card child. yeah there isn't all poppy syndrome here isn't there mark we just love knocking people who've done incredibly well and nobody would dispute that simon cowell has done incredibly well Yes, and uh, he'll go on to do very well. The announcement that X Factor is going to become this Las Vegas entertainment. He's got the support of the retail god, sort of Philip Green behind him. He moves in powerful circles. His, his 50th birthday party, everybody that was necessary in his life was there celebrating his life. You are right, Alan. He, that is his dedication. His mm. career and his life merge into one. And it makes him very happy. It makes him very successful. And he, he's also very ruthless about it. And, and I think he works extremely hard, no doubt about it. But there will become a point where, you know, more of the same will dominate a specific type of entertainment. And I just think... No, uh, I, I think, think by then, by true. that time, he will have changed. He's a very sharp man. Definitely mutual admiration society of Simon Cowell, I would say. My name's <laughs> Dan and Mark and Sue. Thank you very much for being <laughs> so the film on today's show, the internationally acclaimed broadcaster Sir David Frost, and with music from Welsh baritone, discovered by Simon Cowell, Oridian. We'll see you in a moment.